Perfect. And I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you see my screen well? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone to another session of our MUG meeting in Iberia, where we will be talking about the new Marketo Architect certification. Uh, I'm personally very excited about this topic and something I have been looking forward to. Um, we have users here from Spain, Portugal, and today from all over the world. So thank you all for joining and let's get started. Uh, your hosts today are Christina and myself. Uh, I'm Veronica. Uh, we both live in Spain and while I'm not uh, native Spanish, I do speak some Spanish. Uh, most of the time I speak Marketo. I'm a Marketo certified expert and I'm uh, currently a marketing ops manager at a company called Alma. Uh, and we are operating in the healthcare space. And uh, last year I was named Marketo champion and part of this role uh, is to bring together the community here in Europe and share learnings and best practices for all. I know Christina is arriving late today, so I'll be introducing her. Uh, Christina is part of the Adobe team here in Spain, uh, focused on Marketo and more recently on Workfront. Uh, Christina and Carlo will be running a giveaway at the end of the session. So make sure you stay with us until the end. Um, moving on to the housekeeping slide, I want to make sure that you know this space is first and foremost for the user. And uh, it remains a, a space to share our challenges, our solutions. So for these reasons, Adobe has set a few rules such as no self-promotion and uh, pitching and not contacting people outside of the mug without their consent. I would also like to remind the ones who just joined that we are recording this session for later reference and the recording will be uploaded to the Marketo YouTube channel, which I hope you are following. I would also love for everyone here to stay connected with our chapter. Uh, we are the Iberia Marketo user group, uh, about one year old user group, so fairly new. Uh, one way to find us is by going to uh, magsdarmarketo.com. If you don't have an account, please sign up, join our chapter, and you will receive notifications when we have the next session. Okay, so let's look at what else is new. Here is a list of all the Marketo user group sessions scheduled for this month, and they are open for all of us to join, no matter where you are located in the world. Um, I would like to call out the North America virtual mug. Um, I think they are doing a new feature spotlight for the release of the global form validation, which I think is very interesting to discuss. Um, there's a, a few office hours as well. Um, just in general, there are not that many sessions happening in March. And this is because the biggest event takes the main stage. Um, and here I'm talking about the Adobe Summit. Uh, this event is running from March 15 to the 17th. You will find a lot of sessions about Marketo. I think there are about 30 sessions and a chance to network with your peers. Um, I will drop a link in the chat for the summit and also for the brain date. Um, one session I would like to highlight is the power of Visible, uh, which is run by our guest speaker today, Ajay Sarpal, together with Kimberly. Uh, they are both Visible experts. And now going back to our session today, uh, our guest speakers will tell all there is to know about the new Marketo Architect Certification. Um, they'll give us some tips how to prepare for the exam. We are going to take a deep dive into the different exam section and discuss that 
Um, we'll also look at a few sample questions and we'll try to collectively give the correct answer to those. Um, and we'll leave some time for Q&A too. Feel free to drop your questions in the chat as we go. Uh, for our Spanish speaking audience, if you're more comfortable asking your question in Spanish, uh, feel free to do so and Christina or Carlo will translate for us. At the end of the session, we are going to give away three vouchers for the architect certification. Huh? That's exciting. Oh, do you want me to call it? I'll just Maybe, yeah. ask people to mute themselves as we record. Thank you. Um, so make sure you stay with us until the end for the raffle too. All right. So I'm incredibly grateful and happy to have uh, two of the most incredible Marketo champions joining us today. Um, Ajay dialing in all the way from India and Amanda waking up early for us in North America. I would love for you to come off mute and introduce yourselves. Uh, Ajay, let's start with you. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. And I appreciate the introduction here. And thank you, everyone, for dialing in from the different part of the globe. I'm really sorry I need to turn off my video because, you know, all of a sudden uh, my internet sort of started lagging and I need to be on my backup internet. I hope you all are able to hear me well. We can yes. hear you well. Awesome. Thank you. So my name is Ajay Sarpal. I'm based out in Bangalore, India. I'm six times Marketo certified expert, three times Marketo champion, 2020's champion of the year, 2019's fearless marketer. Plus I'm Salesforce certified admin, sales cloud consultant and app builder and blessed to be a part of Marketo's core certification team. So I actually wrote the first Marketo Certified Associate exam and also was a part of the team uh, who actually ended up writing the Marketo Certified Expert, the recently one which was launched last year, plus this Marketo Certified uh, Architect exam as well. So I'm two times a Marketo's subject matter expert and subject matter expert title is given to those who actually complete uh, all the formalities uh, to launch a, a, a certification and I'm MCSA as well. So uh, glad to be speaking here and looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Ajay. Yeah, I'll hop in and go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda Thomas. Um, my credential list is not as long as Ajay's, but uh, still very happy to be here. And I did work with Ajay closely uh, alongside some other Marketo champions on this new MCSA exam. Um, I'm a marketing ops consultant at Atumos and I'm based in Houston, Texas. I'm very happy to be here and hop into all the topics and sample questions we have for you. Thank you, Amanda. I'll switch to the next slide. Cool. Uh, so this is the exam information slide. And you know, the new number of the exam number is ADO E556. And the exam name is Adobe Market to Engage Ar Architect. And the best thing is that earlier, this certification was only meant for partners. It means, you know, you need to be a partner in order to give this certification. But now that this is the bestest part, that anyone can give this certification provided they meet uh, the minimum criteria, which Amanda is going to discuss. And it is, this certification is open for customers and partners. The validity of this certification is of two years. The prerequisite is that you know you should be marketer certified expert. Uh, it is right now only available in English. The passing, sorry, the total questions which are going to get asked is fifty. Um, most of the questions will be multiple choice question followed by a case study. Uh, so just one thing which I want to bring to your attention that uh, in none of the previous marketer certification. Uh, there was a case study to read on, but for this one, there is going to be a case study and you know, that is something which you need to read and there will be a few questions based on that case study. So you may have to uh, refer to this a few times. Uh, the duration of this exam is 150 minutes and you know, the delivery is on site and online and the passing mark is actually 30 out of 50 
and the price you know it is different in india in you in 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 the other part of the world in, in india it is 150 dollar and you know across the globe except india it is 225 dollar usd next slide please Perfect. Yeah, I'll jump into this. So preparing for the exam, these are basically your minimum requirements um, to kind of check in with yourself to make sure you're actually ready for this exam. So experience that is recommended is um, that you're a current MCE and you have at least five years of experience using Mercado. Um, hopefully some of that experience is within multiple instances of Mercado. Um, I don't believe they actually like check to make sure all of this is true, but, um, you're just going to put yourself in a better position to, uh, be able to pass this exam. If all of this is true for you, um, you definitely want familiarity with the tools and technologies in Marketo and surrounding Marketo. So of course you want to know all the Marketo features and functionalities and the apps um, within Marketo. That's um, some of that related to MCE, um, but you wanna know them very thoroughly. Uh, the database systems um, that function within Marketo and outside of Marketo, your API connectivity, a CRM platform. So um, Salesforce is, you know, the number one CRM platform. So if you have experience with that, that's going to help you a lot. Um, but any CRM platform, if you know that it's connected to Mercado and the specifics around that connection, um, you should be good. And then uh, marketing technology platform. So um, think of your event tools or add-ons. Um, so around like Zoom or um, Splash, some kind of connectivity with tools that sit outside of Marketo that bring data into Marketo. Um, that's the experience that they're looking for. And then the business applications, um, we definitely want to make sure that you understand business impact and can effectively explain or communicate solutions to stakeholders at different levels in a company. So um, very technical explanations and then also some non-technical explanations or applications of what you're actually building um, and how it would affect stakeholders. Um, definitely want to understand the business processes impacted by integrations. So, um, you know, being in a position of owning Marketo or working in Marketo a lot, um, you um, can get uh, other stakeholders and people that work in the marketing department asking for new technologies. And you just want to be able to, um, we just want to make sure that people that pass this, this, this exam can um, understand business processes when a new tool or integration is actually connected into Marketo. Um, conceptualize a solution and translate a Marketo, translate to a Marketo engage architecture. So this is kind of taking um, a request by one of those stakeholders, um, whether that's to, um, you know, add a new life cycle stage or something like that. And, and think about all of the different areas in an instance that it may affect. Um, study materials, I think we have the links in the uh, speaker notes, but these are also attached to um, a PDF that goes over all of this information, um, but definitely want to check out the Marketo docs. Uh, I would suggest that you're actually searching for the topics within the Marketo docs, um, that one page it's not a one pager, that PDF that covers uh, all the exam details does list out all of your topics and we'll go through them uh, just here in a second. Um, and I would just search some of those keywords into Marketo Docs to study um, and help you uh, with preparing for the exam. And then also definitely check out community, um, used to be called Marketo Nation. It's the Marketo Knowledge Base. Um, it's, I think, still uh, Marketo Nation in the URL. So um, that will, of course, have a lot of um, study material for you, short videos, questions and answer posts, all of that. Um, so 
those are your resources for getting prepared. Great, yeah, so we'll just hop right into um, the topics that are covered within the exam. Um, the first one is project leadership. So um, I would say some of the topics covered in MCSA uh, are also covered in um, a little bit covered in MCE. So you might see some familiarity while you go through all of these topics. Um, but project leadership, I think, is something that stands out as being different, not really being part of the MCE. Um, so project leadership, um, I'm just, you can read through all of these, but I'm gonna, just gonna point out um, some highlights here. Um, you definitely wanna make sure that you can identify the right stakeholders uh, when a specific request or project actually appears. Um, and this can include like, um, again, adding like a new life cycle stage who needs to be involved or modifying um, a field for like the contact object who needs to be involved in those discussions, scoring is a big one, um, you know, things like that. You want to be able to identify the right stakeholders for um, a specific use case. Um, you definitely want to be able to set project boundaries budget, resources, and scope. And I bolded project boundaries and scope um, because I think these are probably um, most applicable to uh, everyone that uses Marketo. So again, just knowing when something is not related to what you're working on. So if um, someone requests something of you and um, you have a plan to go and build something inside of Marketo, um, what would actually be out of scope if they say, oh, I also want to do this? Um, being able to explain why something is out of scope. Um, yeah, given a modified process, determine who needs enablement and efficient enablement rollout plan. So um, I, again, that comes back to getting a new tool or making a change. What is that actually affecting and who is that affecting? Um, and then the last topic in project leadership is evaluating and auditing and recommending priorities and timeline. So think of a health audit. Um, I know this is more common with consultants um, that do a health audit, but if you have ever entered into a new Marketo instance, um, what are you looking for? How are you identifying gaps within the instance? Um, keep all of that in mind. And I know there's a lot of documentation on the community for this one. So um, definitely something you can read up on more. Um, with the architecture design, we're looking at um, some key design elements that we believe are very common with um, the traditional Marketo user. So one of these is life cycle design. So um, looking at revenue cycle modeler, looking at life cycle stages, how do you actually stamp all that? Um, different behaviors uh, for scoring. So what data does Marketo actually read? Web activity, form fills, all of that. Um, and understand how you can identify those and use those to apply to a scoring model. Um, the next one in line is review an existing implementation and recommend actions to scale campaign execution. So, um, you know, if they lay out something that's like, this is the way things go, um, what could you change or tweak um, to actually make it more efficient and more scalable or even make it run faster um, within Marketo. So knowing campaign execution priorities, uh, racy conditions, all of that is good knowledge to have. Um, outline an operational procedure for lead routing multiple for multiple countries. So um, I know a lot of Marketo users don't do lead routing inside Marketo. They take it out somewhere else. But if you do need to do lead routing in Marketo, um, what would be the actual operational procedure? 
or if a statement is given that it is done outside, what kind of information do you need in order to execute um, the, that routing outside of Marketo? Um, evaluate the impact and requirements to incorporate new technology. So here's a shared theme so far with the topics. Um, you definitely want to um, know how you can incorporate new technologies once they arise. Um, identify different types of integrations and when to use them. So this is kind of like your launch point, your API, um, webhooks, um, just learning all of that information and how to actually leverage it um, most effectively. So um, the next one in line, we are going to outline various stages in the person lifecycle impacted by proposed changes or requirements. Um, so, um, again, if you think of something like, um, we want to add a new stage in between SAL and SQL or something, um, how is that actually impacted, um, within the actual life cycle today? Can they go back to that stage? Can they only move forward to that stage? Um, just understanding the impacts of changing something around life cycle design and appraise a set of requirements and recommend an approach to campaign logic. Um, so again, um, if you're trying to make sure that when someone thinks to Salesforce or your CRM, but your CRM has uh, a minimum number of fields or minimum requirements of information to actually create a person, you don't want that constantly failing, right? So you would think, um, how do I actually take an approach to this campaign logic to make sure by the time I think it, it actually has all that information. Um, so hopefully that gives a little bit more color to the topics that are listed. Um, I know we have some more topics that AJ uh, is going to cover, um, but again, all of these are listed in that PDF, and hopefully this shines just a little bit more light on uh, what these mean. Thank you so much, Amanda. It, it seems that the architecture design is the biggest part of it, if you look at the breakdown. Yes, it, it's definitely a large part of it. Yep. Awesome. So I'll move to the next slide. So I will take this one. Um, so these are the topics like reporting and attribution and advanced operations. Uh, and before I actually speak about these topics, I just want to tell you that when you're preparing for your certification, please pay attention on the best practices and think yourself as an architect that, you know, as an architect, what kind of issues you can actually get into. Uh, those could be, you know, setting up the new instance altogether from scratch, auditing the existing one, um, you know, implement the best practices and, you know, integrating market over with other third party solutions. What are the limitations of that? Uh, you know, if you are going to link market or sync market with the CRM, what are the limitations, you know, uh, and, you know, what are the best practices when you want to do that? And perhaps the limitation of all the modules, you know, like we have it, we could start with workspace and partition and, you know, there are other modules as well, maybe uh, with the attribution model too. So I will first start with the reporting and attribution. So for reporting and attribution, just think about it that, you know, it is definitely, this exam definitely covers uh, a way advanced reporting as compared to what we had in Marketo certified expert exam. So the topics would be on detours of lead life cycle stages, what all we should be doing to have a most impactful report based on the lead life cycle model. Um, and you know, how to track the multi-channel attribution to evaluate return on investment, what are the best practices and what are the pros and cons of different attribution models. So luckily in Marketo, we have two types of attribution model. One is first touch and another one is multi-touch attribution. So if you are all aware that, you know, first touch, first touch stands for which programs are good at acquiring profitable new names, whereas multi-touch answers a complicated business question as to which programs are most influential in moving people forward in sales cycle over time. So uh, just, you know, keep yourself well aware with 
various uh, attribution models that we have, how, the, how we can actually pull the reports based on these attribution model, how lead life cycle works, and you know, what are the limitations of a uh, life cycle modeler. Um, and you know, because the revenue modeler is setting you up for reporting, it is recommending that the transition always include triggers and you know what all the best practices which you may uh, read and find it out just you know go thoroughly on that um, and because you know when you're using triggers uh, you uh, your reports will reflect the true velocity of your model stage flow so yeah just keep these things in your, in your mind and when it comes to the advanced operation uh, the first one would be that, you know, how to improve deliverability, although it is the third one in the bullet point, but in my opinion, you know, that actually uh, takes a very important role because, you know, as a consultant or as an architect, these are the questions which have been asked to us that, you know, our emails are landing in spam or our open rate is poor. How could we improve it? What are the best practices? How we should, you know, improve our email deliverability? And, and you know it, 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 how to improve the open rate and click through rate and all these kind of things you know we need to work on and uh, the another thing as an architect which is being asked that you know when we are integrating a market with a third party solution what are the best practices uh, uh, for the security side of it so that you know because when the because of open api it is very easy to integrate any any third party solution with Marketo, but uh, are we following the best practices here? What are the limitation for one model or the another when we are going for the integration? So uh, the another thing would be the uh, partition and uh, yeah, you know, workspace and partition, maybe it would be better if you understand that, you know, the application of workspace and partition, partition for a given scenario. So, Yep, and the another topic would be, you know, to given a scenario, identify the appropriate steps to improve management or governance. So yeah, these are the points which you should focus on. But honestly, when you're preparing for this exam, just think yourself as an architect and then think about it that, you know, what kind of situations you all could come in uh, or face but most of the time when, you know, you, you are, working as an architect. And most of the time, those are going to be the real world challenge, uh, could be related to reporting, uh, could be related to improving uh, effectiveness, could be improving the email deliverability, improving the security practices, and all these kind of things. And the best part is that if you explore market or community, you will be able to get these things of course, these won't be tagged as uh, market or certified expert questions or means anything of that. But, you know, you need to just read those scenarios or read those real time issues which the users are facing uh, in their day to day operations. And that will definitely help you. Next slide, Veronica. So here we have the sample exam questions and please feel go through this question and uh, feel free to type in uh, the right answer which you think of this. You have three minutes to answer this one. Even if you're not sure, just feel free to type anything. No answer is bad. So we have to choose two. Yes. Okay. So first two, A and C. Okay. A and B, A and B, A and D, Chris, A and C. A and D. One and four. 
A N D. A N E. Yeah, it is tricky. It is always tricky. And this is how, you know, you need to read the question again and again to find out the correct answer. And although we will be covering that in the later slide that, you know, how you need to actually read those questions. So, uh, yeah. And, and I just wanted to call out that uh, Chris had a very nice approach writing here in the chat how to exclude the answers that you think are not correct. That's a strategy too for taking this test. Exactly, exactly. First of all, read the question properly because that is the most important thing that, you know, what is being asked here. And then, you know, the answer would be something at times would be slightly tricky just to understand the knowledge and just to understand that, uh, you know, uh, how well you know uh, the these situations and then issues. So, should we move to the answer? Yes, please. Okay. So the correct answer is A and D. So, yep. So most of the people they spoke about A and E. E can't be correct because you know compare and subscribe rate of email for a specific period of time. Unsubscribe will not help you with the email deliverability. Uh, so email deliverability is more about that. You know if people are actually complaining about um, your emails to ISPs directly, and if that happens. Uh, you know, with the help of uh, Revenue Explorer, you can actually find that out. With that, you can actually find it out even who complained about it and which emails got most of the complaints. And the first one, you know, most of you rightly pointed it out. So yeah, A and D are the right questions. And with the help of D, you can actually find it out how many people are complaining about it and impacting our deliverability. So I will not name one of my client Believe it or not, they also had deliverability issues. And when I saw, I found they were having more than 3,000 complaints from ISPs. And one of their email generated more than 1,800 spam complaints directly from wow. ISPs. Yeah. So uh, these are the things. There are other best practices as well. Of course, we can speak about uh, text version against the HTML version. We can speak about SPF. DKIM, DMARC policy. We could also think about exploring 250 OK, which is the add on on Marketo to find it out how emails are being getting delivered or whether those are getting delivered to, to, to the inbox or the spam folder or maybe getting blocked by the ISPs. But if you read this question, the correct answer is A and D. Mm. Yeah, I really love that you picked this question uh, because one of the choices here is the Revenue Explorer. And I know that's not something everyone would use in their instance, mm -hmm. but still is a question and it's a requirement for this exam. Yes. Because uh, it is being expected that the architect should be knowing almost all modules of Marketo. Got it. Okay. Let's see another question. So yep, you now have uh, a few minutes to answer this one, and then we will be discussing this question.
I suggest we go with A, B, C here uh, because yep. there's two steps for each answer. That's right. Chris, the first one. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Rebti. Thank you, Tara. Maybe, Veronica, we could go to the answer. Yeah. And Zoe, you are absolutely right that not um, market instances are linked with CRM. But uh, as I told you that, you know, we need to uh, think as an architect and as an architect, uh, we need not to know the entire sales force, but at least, you know, from marketing side of, side of it that, you know, what all activities we could do from Marketo uh, to sync data or to change the ownership, to add the record to a campaign, that kind of thing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Not all um, Marketo instances are synced with CRM, but trust me, almost or maybe close to 70 to 80% are definitely synced to a CRM. And it that is being dominated by Salesforce. So, so most of the integration we get to see Salesforce CRM, but yeah. So yeah, the correct answer is one. Um, the last one C is incorrect because even if you're sending us a, a, a subscription list that is not changing the ownership or changing the ownership, you know, you need to go to the smart campaign flow step and then you need to make the change. So I believe in the interest of time, Veronica, we could move on to the next question. Sure. All right. Um, yeah. Like Ajay said, give you a couple minutes. Um, be sure to read the question and the model actually look through that model. All right, got a lot of answers now. Okay, <laughs> I think almost everyone is on the same page. Uh, so you can go to the next slide and see the answer. Yes, it is B. Um, so in this use case, um, the CMO says um, they want to track ongoing marketing engagement as lead moves down the funnel. 
Um, and that's the kind of key piece of information that we're looking at here. Um, so that piece of information, um, that means that he's referring to attribution and that is a separate initiative. Um, life cycle um, and life cycle modeling, this is all dealing with thresholds that you put in place for activity where attribution is kind of taking into consideration um, that, that activity um, as people move down the funnel and being able to backtrack it, right? Um, so B is the correct answer here. You can also use some process of elimination <laughs> a little bit here. Um, as for A, a lead and a sales stage can never MQL again. If you look at the model, you can see that SAL and SQL, um, they can go, or SQL can go back to MQL. So SQL would be considered a sales stage. So you could eliminate that first one there. Um, and then uh, marketing engagement cannot be tracked after leads are in a sales stage. You can see that it goes from SAL to SQL and then back. So um, that's where the model and reading the model can actually help you eliminate some answers here. Um, Modeler does not allow custom stage values and transitions. It does. If you built in the modeler, you can kind of do um, some things um, custom and, and you don't have to use SAL as the stage or SQL, you can name that um, different names and have different values there. So you can definitely use like your resources of key points in the actual description and then reading the model as well to kind of eliminate some answers if you're not 100% locked in or sure of one answer. Awesome. I think there's one more question. Yes. Okay. Um, I do want to call out this is a long one. <laughs> and um, there, are, <laughs> Jay's laughing because he knows there are long, some long winded questions here. So definitely give yourself enough time to read through everything. Yeah, I really like when RJ called three minutes to answer the question, because yeah. if you look at or divide the time by the question, that's the real time we have in the exam. I see a lot of B in the chat. Yes. 
Yeah, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> All right, I think we got a good amount of answers. We can go to the answer here. And yes, so the I think a lot of people said B, um, good. Uh, that's the correct answer. So we are looking for a one life cycle modeler, model that focuses on a multi-product funnel. And some key pieces of this long uh, question or this, this group of information. Um, so obviously they have two products today um, and you can be a customer of both products, um, the software A and software B. And the most probably, the probably, the most in my opinion, um, telling information here is the last line. So within the next two years, the company is going to release a, another software. Um, and um, they do not intend on selling or cross selling the actual software. So we are wanting to look for a life cycle that is scalable. Um, to incorporate A and B that exists today and the C that's eventually coming down the pipeline as well. So we're looking for one lifecycle model that focuses on multi-product funnel. Um, this way it's all in one spot and it's scalable. You can, you know, like add into it on more stages if that's needed um, without going in and modifying your free lifecycle models. And you don't necessarily want to build for something that doesn't exist yet today. So that would kind of eliminate that first answer there. Um, the one lifecycle model that focuses on prospects and customers without detours, um, you can obviously detour in one of the products and not the other. You definitely want your detour um, stages there. And then the two lifecycle models, one for prospect, one for customers. Again, you can be a um, prospect of one and a customer for the other, or you can be a customer of two. And then when C comes along, um, you can be a prospect for that. So that's again, why we want that multi-product funnel um, instead of separating it out with prospect and customer. Um, and I think we can, there might be some Q&A about this question, uh, but uh, B is the correct answer. Okay, thank you, Amanda. This is our last slide. Cool, I'll take this one. Uh, the best, uh, and, and Amanda, please feel free to chime in. Uh, so the tips, uh, you know, uh, for the general exam taking tips that you know. So first of all, be prepared and practice as much as you can. Read the best practices and you know, get into as many scenarios as you could read which are available in market or community. You may not be able to get those scenario or practical issues in market or doc, but you know, by just going through the questions or by going through the issues which are being faced by our uh, users in day-to-day -day life, you will be able to actually understand that, you know, what are the typical questions or typical issues they get in. Read the question very carefully, especially, you know, uh, those who are actually like me, not a native English speaker and English is not their first language, read question very carefully and pay special attention to not, you know, uh, at times when we're reading fast, we do usually tend to avoid reading not. So just focus on that. And plan how you will use the allotted time. This is very important. So let's assume if you're going through questions, there are 50 questions and let's assume you started with one question and you know that is, that is lengthy. It is going to take a lot of your time and maybe not that area which you are comfortable in. I would strongly recommend not to spend 10 minutes on it. Maybe perhaps just, just glance it, answer the question and then you can always review it later. Try to complete the exam as quickly as possible and within your allotted time and give close to 15 to 20 minutes to review those questions where you have few doubts. And you know, when you are in doubt, always use logic. Uh, logic in the sense, you know, just see that perhaps you know, there are four options to one question. Two are definitely wrong. Which 
uh, and which one among these the remaining two could be the correct so yeah use those logics and you know then you know use permutation and combination to get close to the right answer and another important thing answer all questions that is the most important thing and maintain a positive attitude because at times it happens that you know whenever we are giving the exam the heartbeat is bit faster you know we get a little bit of stress and uh, we get into a little bit of stress it happens with everyone just try to believe in yourself believe in your practice and always maintain a positive attitude if the first question of the exam is not something you are comfortable with that doesn't mean that you don't know the all questions or the all answers just keep a positive frame of mind and give 100% to each question because that is that that is very important and plan to finish early and have time for review because as i told you if you are not comfortable with a few questions uh, or you are not sure of the answers of a few questions just keep 15 to 20 minutes of buffer so that you know you could actually answer them once you are done with your exam questions and then submit it amanda would you like to add something I think you covered it all. Yeah, I think the time is probably the biggest way to prepare. Um, just know exactly how how you're going to allot your time and separate out your time. Um, you know how much time you're going to spend reading the case study and then going through each question in addition to that. So yeah, great point, Sade. Thank you, Bo. This is super relevant and. Uh, I think that now we're gonna open for Q&A and in the same time, I will stop the recording.